Question 17, and probably the first really annoying question with a lot of working out. And the one where you need one of the formulas from the start of the test. Summit has a pond in the shape of a prism. What's that mean? It means it's got the same shape going all the way through it. Do you recognise that shape? Most of you don't, because when you see that shape, you're used to seeing things that look like that. Do you recognise that shape? Because that shape is the same kind of shape as this cross section there. You've got two parallel sides, which means that shape is a trapezium. And if you look at the start, it tells you how to find the area of a trapezium. Half A plus B times H. Basically, add the two parallel sides together, A plus B, times it by the distance in between, and then halve it. So, what's going on here? The pond is completely full of water. Summit wants to empty the pond so he can clean it. Summit uses a pump to empty the pond. The volume of water in the pond decreases at a constant rate. The level of the water in the pond goes down by 20 centimetres in the first 30 minutes. So here's a little bit that's going to help us work stuff out. There. Work out how much more time Summit has to wait for the pump to empty the pond completely. So, first of all, what I'm going to do is I'm going to work out how much water has actually left the pond in 30 minutes. There's, there's more than one way to do this, but um, this is what the way I prefer doing it. So, it's gone down by 20 centimetres. Look here. It's 0.5 metres high on the short end, okay? Which means uh, 50 centimetres, doesn't it? If it's gone down by 20 centimetres, that's going to be 0.5. Two, isn't it? 0.2 meters. So the amount of water that's gone is, if you imagine this shape here, which goes around like that, it's like a cuboid, isn't it? Well, it is a cuboid. Okay, that's the water that's gone down. Now put the arrow. That means it's gone down. So the volume of that water there, because it's a cuboid, is just the 20 centimeters. Now remember, we've got to use meters. So 0.2 times by 1, that's the same as there, times by 2. So I'm going to write down, um, water gone equals, um, what did I say, 0 0.2 multiplied by 1 multiplied by 2, which is, well 1 times 2 is 2, 2 times 2 is 4, but there's a decimal, so it's 0 0.4 metres cubed in 30 mins. Now, when you're talking about rates of things happening, it's always best to talk in whole units, so in an hour. 30 minutes, two of those is one hour, so that means it loses 0.8 metres cubed in one hour. You could write that as 0.8 metres cubed per hour, like that. Okay, so we know how much water it's losing. We know how much it's lost, we know how much it's losing. 0.8 metres cubed per hour. Now, I'm going to work out what is left then of the volume. So volume left in the pond. Well, you can see it's gone down to here. So that means you've got 0.3 metres on that end, 0.3. And over here, because you've, it was 1.3 and you've lost 20 centimetres, so it's going to be 1.1. So 1.1 metres. Okay. So remember, the cross section is a trapezium, so I said we're going to add the, together the two parallel sides. So 1.1 plus 0.3 is 1.4 and then we're going to take 1.4 we're going to multiply it by the distance between the two parallel sides, that's uh, 2 and then you're going to halve it, so divide by 2 which is nice because 
1.4 times 2 divided by 2 is just going to be 1.4 uh, meters cubed left. That's how much is left. So we're nearly there. It's losing 0.8 meters cubed per hour. There's 1.4 meters cubed left. So however many 0.8s fit into 1.4, that's how many hours are left. Because the question is, work out how much more time something has to wait. So, we're just going to do 1.4 divided by 0 0.8. Well, uh, time left equals 1.4 divided by 0 0.8. Now, it's probably easier if you realise that 1.4 divided by 0 0.8 is exactly the same as 14 divided by 8. All I've done is multiply both numbers by 10 with a division question. If you multiply both of the numbers by the same amount, you'll get the same answer at the end. So the same amount of 8s fit into 14 as 0 0.8s will fit into 1.4. And 14 divided by 8 just seems a lot easier than 1.4 divided by 0.8. So now I'm going to do 14 divided by 8, which you could either do uh, as 14 over 8. How many 8s go into 14? 1. What's left? 6 over 8. 6 8s is 3 quarters, so is 1 and 3 quarters. Or, so I'm doing two methods. You don't have to do two methods yourself, just whatever you prefer. You could use the bus stop method. So 8. 14. How many 8s go into 1? None. How many 8s go into 14? 1. Point, point, 0. The remainder, how many 8s go into 14? It was uh, 1. Remainder 6. How many 8s go into 60? That's 7, because 7 times 8 is 56. Remainder 4. Put another 0. How many 8s go into 40? 5. 1.75. 1 and 3 quarters. So that's how many hours it is, 1.75 hours, 1 and 3 quarter hours. You could still mess up here by doing the thing that people usually do with time and saying it's going to be 1 hour 75 minutes or something like that. What is 3 quarters of an hour? It is 1 hour 45 minutes.